Yeah, get so the truth. What up? Your girl Troy. Yeah. Ride with me. Yeah. When she step out, move to the side trick. Gotta holler at her, hit her on the side kick. Gotta have her, cause you know that she a fly chick. The type of shorty that I know I wanna ride with. Uh, the type of shorty that he know he wanna ride with. Uh, the type of shorty that he know he wanna ride with. Uh, When I first started, I was probably like 13, and I was listening to uh, Lil Bow Wow at the time. And I was just sitting around, I was like, oh, I can do that. So I was just watching him, his videos, and I was like his, one of the biggest fans. So then one day I just sat in my room, and I was just writing, just writing. Stuff didn't come out right. I still remember my first rap. It'd be me and Brad sitting back in a black Cadillac. I'm from Wide Awake, did you know all of that? Because I'm a ghetto girl, freestyling, sitting back in the King's Tower. It's garbage, but <laughs> it was my first rap. I love Langston Hughes and um, Maya Angelou. And then, you know, I started writing poetry, you know, kind of just like I would I would read one of their poems. 
and I would kind of write back, write back to them as far as relating to them and their struggle and putting it with my struggle or how I felt about things and kind of answering their questions that they asked in their poems. And um, my mom always said, you know, I had that, that gift to, you know, write things down with the best of them. So I kind of ex expressed that gift that I had with my cousin Jermaine and he kind of taught me how to, you know, put it with a rhythm. So then I just started taking it serious to people here knocking rap, so I rap for them. But when we at school, we used to have this notebook, me and a couple girls or some guys, and we would write a rap and pass it. They had write a rap, pass it, we said we had the best rap. We never, we just write it, we never perform it or anything. And um, that's really how I got started, why I wanted to do it. It was me, a rapper named Biz, and um, rapper Youngin, Lil D's, a whole bunch of boys called Get em Boys. They were all based out of Orlando, um, up and coming rappers trying to, you know, trying to find their way through the music business. I write a song, record it, and um, my, this other guy I met, I used to go to his closet and record. So, and he let me do it for free. So, I go in there, I record something. He really didn't know how to mix the music down, so it didn't sound as good, but it's still, I can still hear myself, and I can still practice like that. So, I'll record a song. And I put it on my MySpace page. So I'll let everybody hear it or I have it on my phone or something. Or on my iPod. And I'll, let, I'll just pass my iPod around school. Or just tell them, go listen to my song, let me know what you think. Or let me know if it's good enough or what should I do to make it better. So that kind of helped me because in the same sense, I was still getting guidelines from other people, other listeners. But I just didn't have nobody there just to go off of before they heard it. Like it's, it's crazy to actually be in the studio. like. The first time was amazing. And it's like every time you get in there, especially when you know you have a, a, a great song, it's like you're just so anxious. It's like you're running to the to the studio. And then you get in the studio and it's like you're, you're releasing everything. So it's like, wow, everybody can hear what you just created. And it's like the best feeling. It's different recording myself because I'm a perfectionist. But at the same time, when there's no one here to, you know, tell me, tell me what they expect from me already, it's kind of hard to critique myself. I get this phone call saying my mom is in the hospital and I gotta drive 40 minutes away, like terrified, I don't know what's going on really because it's still when we get there. So I got there and she was okay. She had to get like some staples in her head or something. And she told me not to go back to the house. So being me, I went back to the house anyway, just to see like, is this real? You know, and everything was missed. Everything, I had kicked the door in, but I felt bad because when my mom, she went into my room. So I'm like, I could have been, I could have saved her, you know? And the only thing was messed up was my room and the, the door. So I'm like, she ran into my room, you know? And I felt like he wouldn't have did it if I was there. I know he wouldn't have did it if I was there. Still like kind of touchy subject, you know, with children. <laughs> but um, I used to just, just give me inspiration to write. So I, write, I wrote a whole song about how, about my life. It was called This Can't Be Life. And um, it just, I don't know, like, life just gives you stuff to write about. The summer going into my sophomore year, I lost my father. And that was the hardest thing I think that I've ever had to overcome. But to make a long story short, he was on life support. And that same day that I, well, the night before, I had that dream. And that, that, that morning when I woke up, I went to Atlanta and my aunt called me back again. And she said that he decided that he didn't want to be on life support. So I think that was the, the biggest hurt in my life that I had to overcome. But even then I got really close with my aunt. And it was crazy because three months later she died. And she actually died in church singing, I on a sparrow. And it was so ironic because that's what she always said, you know, that was her favorite song and she's singing her favorite song in church and she always said that, you know, my life's purpose is to get your father in heaven and I'm gonna see him soon. It's, it's really hard to explain what, what music does because it does so many things. It makes me want to just create music. Music is, is just life to me, that's the only way I could put it. And like just the word music, it just feel like I should be doing something. I should be 
they should be talking about me when they're talking about music. Oh, that's crazy. I never thought about it. If you want music to do this, I'll be the one to make up the music. I can't express myself. I might not live at all. Being a rapper, athlete, and a student, I think uh, it's very unique. I think uh, I have like, I can pull from each each world. Like um, being a rapper, I can pull from being an athlete. I can pull from being a student, and I can relay this and like so that people understand me and people people get certain things. Like um, a lot of my punchlines or a lot of some of the witty stuff that I say comes from being an athlete. Like I relay being an athlete in my rapping. So. I think it's unique. I think it, I think it helps me, and, and eventually, like, it just gets me to where I can relate to everyone else, relate to people. Being a student, an athlete, and a rapper, it's it's hard because I'm trying to balance my time out with my education, with basketball, and with my music. And I mean, my my major is chemistry, and that's hard itself. Like, just being a regular student, no athletics, no rapping. It's hard, but I'm gonna do it because I have no choice. If that's what I wanted. I'm gonna go after it. basketball. I mean, I love it. I love it. I love my teammates, so I can't let them down. So I gotta spend just as much time practicing on my game, studying so I can stay eligible, and with my music so I can be what I wanna be. But, I mean, it's hard, but I'm focused and I'm gonna make it happen. In all seriousness, like, I feel that. I have to make it and I will be there. Like I, I will I will succeed. I will be a multi-platinum artist. I will be at the top of everyone's rappers list. Like I feel that what makes me different from every other rapper is, you know, like in in rap it's it's kinda like this fad or this fashion where like you have to be a gangster or you have to be uh, so far left field where you have to be non-associated with gangsters like you either have to be like over to the left or far to the right and I think what makes me different is just I'm not like in a category you cannot put me in a category it's like it's like okay yeah I didn't grow up I wasn't growing up where I was selling drugs or I wasn't growing up or where I was over here robbing people but at the same time I'm living or I'm around these people, you know? And at the same time, it's like, it's like in my music, I'm not saying that I'm one of those, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going around saying, okay, yeah, I'm gonna kill this guy or, and I think that's that's not really hip hop. I think it's fake and I think it's something that the labels created just for, you know, to sell and, and actors is just, I mean, rappers are kind of like becoming actors now. And I think um, that's what sets me apart from everything. 10 years from now, five years from now, I see myself as being a rapper. Not scratch that, scratch that. I see myself as being a star. I am a rapper already. I mean, I write my own music. I record it, people hear it, so I am a rapper, but I want to be a star. I mean, you turn your TV on, you gonna see me. You turn your radio on, you gonna hear me. YouTube, you gonna see me. I mean, Troy, your name is gonna be everywhere. And you have two options, the like it or love it, because you gonna hear it, point blank period. I can only say that the, the, I'm gonna I'm a be there and I'm gonna make it there and it's just this focus that I have, like this desire, this focal, this focus and this desire that I have is, is just, it's, it's humbling. And I think I'm I'm blessed to, to be given this talent, but you know, I will be there and I will make it. And it's, it's no other way. I'm trying so many different areas as far as basketball, rapping, school. I still, I wanna be a dentist, so. I do have a lot of black backup plans, and one of them has to work. But I know I have to stay determined. I got to work hard. Most of all, I got to focus.